Hi. In this SciShow talk show, I teach Hank about taxidermy. And while we don't go into the full process, we do show parts of the process. So if that makes you squeamish, or this just isn't the kind of video you want to watch right now, I recommend you skip ahead to the second half of the video, where Hank, Jesse, and I talk about a really cool bird. Thanks. Hello, and welcome to SciShow Talk Show, the day where we talk to interesting people about interesting stuff. Today, I'm talking to Olivia Gordon. Hey. Hi. People know who you are. I think so. Okay. Hi, though. What have what you been up to? We're surrounded by animals. Uh, yeah, I've been hanging out with a lot of dead animals more than a Animal lot of these days. Yeah. So when okay. I met you, you were working at a bug place at the Insectarium, That's taking right. care of tiny little bug animals. Uh, but you've quit your job and are now going to taxidermy school? I have now finished taxidermy oh, okay. school. Now you're taxidermying. I'm trying to move in that direction. Okay. Well, but you're doing extent. it. Well, I'm not, doing you're it. You're not doing yes. it super professional, but you're doing it. I'm doing it. Yeah. Yes. I heard that you're going to, that you've brought me all that I need to taxidermy a squirrel. I hope I have. For you to taxidermy a squirrel, because I'm not going to do this. Yeah. Well, I, I thought I'd walk you through the process. Okay. Um, sort of expedited. So what do you have? So normally you start with a whole animal, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I wasn't going to come and gut an animal on the show. It's a Probably messy and time consuming. Yeah, we have to go to, go to you Yeah, you'd have that. to come to me again <laughs> for that. So maybe next time. But this is a, a hide that's come back from a tannery. It has holes in it. You can see a lot yeah. of times, like larger animals, if they're hunted with a gun or an arrow, bow and mm -hmm. arrow, you'll find holes from where they were shot. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, if I'm not careful skinning them, You'll also Get have holes. And this is a what kind of squirrel? This is a pine squirrel. Was. Was. Well, and it's an ex squirrel. So you've got your little guy. Mm -hmm. And so, take that little guy. <laughs> so you'll have to find a form. That's the next part in your taxidermy. So you have to take a measurement. There are some standard measurements for finding forms, but for something small like this, you just go from the nose to the tip of the tail mm -hmm. and widthwise. And then you have something like this. Oh my goodness. I brought you my favorite one because it's got things like dinosaurs in it. Right, because you're going to taxidermy a dinosaur. Exactly. Look, I even dog-eared it for you. Oh yeah. Da, da, da. Um, <laughs> Good weird dog. It's a hadrosaurus yeah, right Yeah, in case you need a shoulder mount of a brachiosaurus in your house <laughs> or something. I'm not sure. You can see there's all sorts of different squirrel forms. Uh huh. Like say you want your squirrel hunched over. There are very few number of forms that you can choose from. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes, you know, you'll have a, a, a skin like this, but you'll, you'll end up getting a form. That's way too big. That looks like this. And then you're like, well, how on earth? Yeah, that's not gonna. <laughs> it's just never gonna happen, right? So that's where a lot of uh, the art of taxidermy, mm -hmm. I guess, comes in. A lot of, maybe this guy? Mm-hmm. A lot of that guy. A lot of this guy. <laughs> okay. Um, depending. Just... Something something small like a squirrel, you know, you're not going to use this a whole lot. Right. But if you're mounting like a caribou, you're not going to want to hack away the whole thing well, yeah. with a blade like that. In order for me to get mm -hmm. this skin to fit on this, essentially this is what I've come down to. Wow. Which doesn't look anything like how no, it started. No, they should have just sent you a block of styrofoam. Anything like a squirrel, right? So, okay, what is th what is this? Now that I've seen that you can just, I thought it was hollow. No, so it's a foam. It's a really durable foam, and I have it in a two-part um, kind of system, and so you can say this form was too small. Mm -hmm. I could add more foam onto it and then be able to Right. Take away so you can do and both. add anatomy. But and I see that you've added a little bit of eye. Mm -hmm, I did area. the first one. So you've got your uh, your form shaped down so that the skin will actually fit onto it, which uh, <laughs> that looks like a lot of work. It, it can be a lot of work, as you can see. I had to take all the arms off and everything. So we'll have to build this back up with clay when we're done. Okay. Much like the legs have been done. Mm -hmm. But once you get the skin so that it will actually fit over your form. There are a lot of poking and pulling and just sort of... And stretching like, and... How, how rough can you be with an animal pelt? It really depends on the animal. Yeah. Something like a squirrel has a much thinner skin than something like a caribou. Right. And so you obviously can't tear like on it I, quite I as I don't have hard. any problem eating like a, uh, a chicken skin, but my 
shoes are made out of cow skin. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Not a lot of chicken skin shoes in the world. And so, you've also got like a little eyeball. I do in have there. a little eyeball in there, and I'm gonna show you how to put the other one in. You can order in the catalogs all these similar eyes, you mm -hmm. know, like you could have formed. Is this what a squirrel eye looks like? I don't know. I've never gotten that close to one. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got modeling clay. So this is clay? just what clay. Is yep, yeah. just ceramic clay. Anything that will air dry, any clay. You know, you don't want to use like Fimo or sculpy kind of mm -hmm. bake clay, but anything like this will work. And so you're basically just trying to recreate the eye anatomy. So we'll put a little clay in there so the eye will stick. You want to shove it in there? What a happy little man. <laughs> All right. There we go. But essentially you're just building up this eye anatomy so that when you put the skin over it, it looks like there's animal. some musculature there and right. just a giant bulging eye out of the side. So that gives you sort of an idea of uh, yeah. form prep, not, mm -hmm. not anything beautiful. But then, so all those holes have to be patched, okay. first of all. And then did you do something to make this softer? I did, yeah. I it? just soaked it in a borax water solution. And you're just turning his little I'm head inside out. I'm just turning him out. inside out. <laughs> because something that has to be done is... Can you see here where the lips fold over? Okay, There's yeah. this, this piece of, uh -huh. of lip that's still... So if you think... This is kind of gross, but if you think about if you skinned your lip, right, mm -hmm. along your... You'd have this this piece, and so it's it's all of your lip, right? Right. And what, what we want to try to do is fillet it open so that it's... So that... Here, let me see if I can just demonstrate. But so that there's this piece is open, so that will become really important later. So that gets filleted open, as well as the eyes. Oh yeah, okay, I'm the seeing eyelids. that's up. Mm -hmm. And that will become important in our next step. That's a lot of work. It is, and something really small and thin like this can be very frustrating. Squirrels are a good practice because there's plenty of them. Yep, and you can... Molds are probably not that expensive. Nope. And they're also, I imagine you gotta work hard. Mm-hmm, yep. Tedious little things. And you got another one. I do, So so once you have Oh, I see. Okay. Oh my okay, god. Where we're going here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so once you get your uh, your <laughs> eyes, you've seen on, better days. Sure has. Yeah, they don't look very good throughout the entire process. You know, you're like, oh, this is, this is this gonna is not turn gonna out turn real out bad. Well. And then sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. But so we've got the form on. We've got the eyes in with uh -huh. that eyelid oh, with skin that. Uh -huh. that we filleted open, pulled out. And the point of that is you've got this eye and lip tucking tool. Uh -huh. And so the goal here is to tuck that piece of skin between the eye and the clay that right. you've laid in there to create an eyelid. Then you're able to shape the eye. So something like a squirrel, you know, you're not going to want an eye that's like this. But with the uh, the clay in there, that allows you to be able to mold and model the eye in a way that is more anatomically correct. Like and the these lip. just like still wet and mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, you have to like... keep them pretty wet throughout the entire process because the skin has to be able to move mm -hmm. and stretch. So then again, same thing with the lips. You want to tuck that piece of skin mm -hmm. make you, that we make fillet your, make your open. Lips. Mm -hmm. And then this is the point where I like to put the tail wire in. A lot of folks will put it in at this phase, but this is just too many like. Things. Skin puncturing, you know, <laughs> things to try to avoid. So I usually put the tail in here once I get it pretty much sewn up through here. And mm -hmm. that's just a piece of wire that's anchored. And then you just sew it right on up. Okay. And then once that's all said and done, <laughs> you get your friend here. a finished product. And you can. Hey, really you silly. look beautiful now. There's a little side show ribbon. And so once you get it all tucked in and everything, there's a, a putty that you can use to create eyelids. It's what I used for the teeth, mm -hmm. um, the oh, jawline, yeah, teeth. et cetera. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> a, uh, a very speedy, step quick. Step by step squirrel demo. When did you make him? Last night. Oh my God. Mm hmm. And you did all this last night? Yes, it was a very uh, fast process through all of this <laughs> last night. <laughs> so that's a one night squirrel. That is, yep, it sure looks like it too. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Where did it's... you get this little banner from? Oh, I made it on the printer.
furniture. Jeez. That's beautiful. <laughs> High tech stuff. I'm so I'm, I'm overwhelmed. Um, there you go. That's all it takes. And those whiskers look great. Thanks. It's beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. And you have a fox friend as well. Did you make this fox? I did. Yep. Yeah. It looks lovely. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and and the duck. Yep. Is also your work. Where did you get the duck parts? Duck parts are from a friend who's a hunter. Beautiful. Well, let's clean up a little yeah. bit so that we can have the animal who's going to come join us not be terrified. Hi, what do you think? A bird friend. This is Zoe. She's a Red Lord Amazon parrot, and she's checking out everything. <laughs> what do you think? She has eyes on the sides of her head, so when she's tilting her head this way, she's actually looking up. What is so that? So she's looking at all those very bright lights oh, yes, right now. Yeah. Bright. I like your little noises. We have a guy too. Oh yeah, is that exciting? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so red lord Amazon parrots are found in Mexico all the way down to Ecuador. So they live in tropical areas, rainforest, and they live in groups of like 20 to 30. Mm. And they're super social animals, um, but they are very wary of strangers. So they're monogamous and they would hang out with their mate all the time, and um, they live within their flock, and they, they know their flock, but they really don't hang out with each other besides their mate. Hmm. Um, so she doesn't mind being around a lot of people, but she doesn't want you very close. Right. <laughs> yeah. Are you are you the mate? I am. I am. And we've got a little love triangle going on at, at Animal Wonders because... I mean, I think it's like a giant polygon. <laughs> like, all the animals love you. <laughs> Well, we have we have another parrot named Chongo, uh, Lilac Crown Amazon parrot, and he really loves Zoe, but oh, Zoe loves me I more. See. Chongo would really like to get close to Zoe, but Zoe's like, you stay in your own place, or I'm wow. gonna bite you. So she's happy, like yeah. if there's like a wall, but like a you know bars between them. But otherwise, she's like, nope. Yeah, Chongo needs to move on. <laughs> Poor Chongo. It's it's hard. It's hard, but you gotta you just gotta do it. She's the prettiest bird there, though. You're a very pretty bird. She's very pretty. Uh, so what did you think of our taxidermy session here? It was really interesting and kind of ridiculous. A little hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Just turn on their skin inside out, like you do, you know. Yeah, we got a, we I got mean, a duck here. So you've done birds. Is this amazing. is there a, like a unique challenge to birds? Yes, birds I would say are by far the most difficult. Okay. okay. Their skin is really thin, and then they also produce a lot of oil and then pick up a lot of oil. So you have to be really careful after you've washed. The, the skin when handling it, or it'll just pick up all the oils from your hands again, and they oh, look okay. disgusting. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so once, do you have to like preen, like they're constantly preening their feathers. Mm -hmm. How do you, you know, replicate preen? that preening? Yeah, with a uh, hair dryer. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Yep. Do you use like a little brush or something too? No, well, you can use a dissection needle. Okay. So it's basically just like a long needle on a stick. And so you can blow dry and then realign the feathers yep. Mm. with yep. those, but... Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever done a parrot? I have not. Oh. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like killing things. <laughs> <laughs> Your pupils are like... Wah, 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 She's got a lot, of, a lot of emotions going on right now. <laughs> some are good and some are bad. Isn't that exciting? Oh. Yeah. Amazon parrots are ruled by, um, I mean, instinct, but also emotion too. Their excitement can very quickly turn to aggression. And so we try to stay calm around Zoe. And if she gets scared of something, you know, she displaces her, her aggression on me. So we try and be, yeah, we try and be calm and collected. Oh, thank you for the kiss. <laughs> that was a big kiss. Parrot beaks always terrify me. They look like okay, they're, yeah. re they're ready to bite my, the flesh right off my finger. Um, they could. Definitely, they can crack a, a, a nut in half. And actually, I think I have one. Would you like one? You want to crack a nut in half? <laughs> Would you like that? Yeah, that's good stuff right there. You can do that. Oh. That's really. Sometimes she gets stage fright with the with the almonds, and she'll just like be like, "This is too hard. I'll do this at home." These guys have a really strong bite pressure. They could uh, break a, a wooden broomstick in half. Easily break your finger in half if they if they really Could wanted to. Can you imagine to. biting through a broomstick? Uh, crack. Yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, so we just try and make everything yeah. easy peasy with her. Make it so you don't want to bite me. Yeah, and then you don't have to worry yeah, about do it. that. And then some parrots, um, they're very um, tactile with their beaks. They like to feel, so they don't have very many taste buds at all. So they can eat super spicy things or really bitter things and it doesn't bother them. Yeah, but they are very mm, sensitive to <laughs> to textures and so we have some birds that won't some parrots that they'll like they'll eat like cantaloupe but not watermelon because it's like has like a different texture like a granularity texture or mm. um but they'll spend a lot of times like rubbing things around on the roof of their mouth and uh roof of their beak and uh just feeling that texture to see if they like it or not but she'll eat anything yeah okay. are you just gonna hold that yeah it's fun i'm yeah. saving it for later <laughs> Funny. One leg. She's funny. Oh yeah, balancing. I'm not doing anything. I can probably move my thumb. Yeah, these guys have amazing feet. So they have two toes on the front. You want to wave hello? Oh no. Good girl. Thank you. Yeah, she was, she was over it. But yeah, so her feet, two toes on the front and two toes on the back, called yeah, zygodactyl feet. <laughs> Good job. And they're very strong, so they can balance on one foot. You saw that she was using the, her feet to eat that, to hold onto that nut. And she would grab like a, a big fruit or something with her, with her foot and then break it open with her beak and, and peel it and then eat it. Um, and then they use their feet to um, groom themselves too, but, but perch on their perches and they can, they hold on really strongly. So like other birds that have, like songbirds have three toes in the front and one in the back, and they just, they don't have a super strong grip, but parrots do, and Zoe does something pretty fun. Oh, itchy head first. Yeah, she does something really fun. You guys wanna see it? I think I've showed this off before. She's, I don't think you've seen it, have you? Yeah. All right, I might have to stand up for this, but I'll keep her in frame. All right, ready, Zoe? One, two, three, bang. Oh, and one foot. Oh. One, I only need one foot. <laughs> she is showing off now. Yeah. You are. Oh, that's my ring. Get those. There you go. You want to get a couple? Get a couple. There you go. Mm. Is that and one then she spot can pull herself where, there's, where there's no feathers? Where they connect. The, yeah. yeah, which is, like, is that hard to do? Where their beak connects to their skin when you do taxidermy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's like super thin skin there, mm -hmm. and then it has to, uh, yeah. These guys can live to be 60 years old, and oh when my. they're babies, they're more green. They have less red and yellow on them, but as they mature, um, they mature at about four years old. Then they get their beautiful yellow cheeks and bright red forehead, which they're known for. And then you're a mature bird for yeah. like 56 years. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Monogamous, too. And like that's longer than a person gets to be mature. <laughs> Should we show off? Can, can, like, you touch? Oh. Oh, nice. Isn't that beautiful? Look at you. Good girl. Thank you. That was exciting. You huh? are such a good bird. She is a good girl. How much, she, time, how much time do you have to spend? So if she was an only bird, we'd have to spend a good amount of time, you know, like yeah. eight hours a day with her. But um, you wave in, you want more treats? Um, but because she is surrounded by a big flock of birds, she doesn't need as much attention as, you know, one-on-one -on -one attention as um, other mm -hmm. as she might. Um, but we do spend, every day we spend time together. She's nine years old and um, she's learned two words. Everyone asks me, you know, can she talk? Can she talk? That's all they want to know about. I'm like, no, there's so many cooler things to learn, but they can mimic sounds that they hear. And, um, they do use it as part of their communication, and um, she's she mimics lots of sounds. She mimics, mimics like um, microwave beeping and water dripping and doors closing, um, but she's only learned two human words. Do you want to try human words? What do you think? I should say one and a half. She she's not excel at the second one. Ready? She said pretty. Pretty. Yeah, I know. There's a scream, but I like it. Ready? Want to try again? You can clear your mouth. Ready? Yeah, you're very pretty. <laughs> when she gets really excited, she screams it. Like deep screaming, like pretty, pretty, pretty! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sorry, sorry all of those with headphones on, earbuds. <laughs> she gets loud. Um, okay, so the other word, we've been working on this one for seven years. She, it's, it's hello. Mm -hmm. You ready? Hi, hi. Yeah, okay, sure. 
<laughs> That's something. I'm gonna try one more time. Are you laughing now? <laughs> you say hi, hi, hi. I mean, she's got two syllables in there. <laughs> yeah, people make. <laughs> Is, are you saying that's what I sound like when I laugh? <laughs> she knows the laugh, obviously. She gives me a kiss. She says no. Good girl. <laughs> and she does. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> My son also recently learned that one. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Probably spits too when he does it. <laughs> Pretty, pretty. Um, and then these guys have really interesting personalities. <laughs> oh, big bird, shake it off. Shake it off. Yeah, that was a good one. We were talking about her eyes way earlier. And uh, those, are, those are her excitements and her angry ways that she communicates those two, two things. She would, it's called pinning of her pupils. <laughs> she's doing it right now. And that's, right now she's being excited. But if she was, upset about something, um, she would slick her feathers tight against her body or make them really big, lean kind of forward, and then pin her eyes. Either they'd be going in and out, woo, like that, or they would just get teeny tiny, mm. um, and the pupils get really small, and you know, she would look scary. Interesting. Yeah, like so they don't have like, facial yeah. muscles, like they don't have no. eyebrows. Um, they can't, you know, say, girl, I'm angry. You know, they'll just go, woo, you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, little alarm bells in my eyes. <laughs> Good girl, Zoe. Thank you for coming on the show, Zoe. It's very nice to meet you. You're very pretty. Pretty, pretty. Uh, Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. Jesse's at youtube.com slash animalundersmontana where you can see uh, a show that we produce with her. The life of a person who takes care of uh, lots, lots like of animals. 80 animals or whatever you got. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Olivia, uh, also here on SciShow. And also making us cute little taxidermy squirrels. Thank you very much. We get to keep it. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow Talk Show. Uh, we are very pleased uh, to have you as part of this thing that we do. And if you want to see more, they were at youtube.com slash SciShow.